Welcome to the channel. In this tutorial, we will see how we can create a simple calculator using the Go programming language. Now the calculator that we are creating here is a console application and uh, it will work on two numbers and it will support addition, subtraction, multiplication and division operations. If you want, you can implement other operations also. So how we're gonna construct this uh, calculator program is First, we will ask the user to enter two numbers and the user can enter the numbers with the decimal places. And after that, we will ask the user to enter the operation that he wants to perform. If he wants to perform addition, then he has to enter plus for subtraction minus symbol for multiplication star symbol. And for the division operation, the user has to enter the division symbol and after that we will perform that particular operation on the numbers that the user has entered and we will display the result so here what i have done is i have mentioned that this is the main package and then i have imported fumpt module and then we have the main function in go programming language the program execution starts from the main function which is present in the main package that's what we have here so now the first thing that we do here is we will declare the variables that we need. As I said before, in this program, we will ask the user to enter two numbers and to store those two numbers, we need a couple of variables. I'm going to declare them in here where I'm going to call the variables as number one and number two, and they're going to be of type float 64. After that, we need a variable for storing the operation that the user is going to enter. As I said before, the user will enter a symbol. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a string variable for storing the symbol that the user is going to enter. Where I'm going to call it as operator and it will be of type string. Okay, now what we can do now we can ask the user to enter two numbers. So I'm going to use the fumpt package and I'm going to use a function called as print and I'm going to say enter the first number. After seeing this message, the user is going to enter the number and we can read that number by using a function available in the fumpt package. So it will be fmt fumpt dot scan line scan ln and uh, here we will read the number and we will store it in the num1 variable so it will be the address of the number one variable okay now similarly we can read the second number i'm going to copy this and i'm going to paste it in here and i'm going to say second number and we will read the number and we will store it in the number two variable okay now we can ask the user to enter the operator. Again, I'm going to use the pumped package and the print function. And uh, I'm going to specify the message here as enter the operator. And also we will display the options addition, subtraction, multiplication and division operation. After that, we will uh, read the value entered by the user and we will store it in this operator variable. So it will be formed dot scan line. And uh, here we will read the value and we will store it in this operator variable. Okay. So now we know the number on which we have to perform the calculation. And also we know which calculation that we have to perform. Now what we can do is we can implement the calculator. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the switch statement. So it will be switch and the expression for this switch statement will be the value present in this operator variable. So I'm going to specify that in here. Now every case of this switch statement will contain the possible operator the user can enter. So we will have a specific case for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division operation. So here we will have the case for the addition. If the user is going to enter, let us say plus, then what we want to do. If the user is going to enter plus, then we will perform number one plus number two and we will display the result. So here 
I'm gonna directly uh, perform that calculation and display the result. So I'm gonna use the pumped dot printf function and uh, we can format the output here. And uh, since we are displaying the number of type float, I'm gonna use the format specifier as percentage f and then uh, we will display the operator percentage s. Again, we will use the format specifier percentage f is equal to the result which will be of type float. If the user is going to enter let us say 10 and 20, this formatting will display 10 plus 20 is equal to 30. Okay. Now here we need to provide the values for these uh, uh, placeholders. So first we will display the value of this number one uh, variables value and after that we will display the operator. After that we will display the number two and after that we have to display the result of number one plus number two. So here we will perform that calculation. So it will be number one plus number two. That's it. We have written the case for the addition. Now if you are coming from C, C++ or Java, then you guys may remember that when using the switch statement with the cases, we use the break statement because in C, C++, Java, the case of switch are fall through. That is, uh, if you don't use break statement, then uh, if a particular case matches, then after executing the statements inside a particular case, the control will fall through to the next case and it will execute the statements of the next case. To avoid that, we use the break statement. But in Go programming language, the cases in switch statement are not fall through. It will not execute the statements in the next case. So here we don't have to use the break statement. Now here we have written the code for the addition. Similarly, we have to write the code for subtraction, multiplication and division. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and then uh, I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to change the operator. It will be subtraction and here uh, we have to perform number one minus number two. That's it. Similarly, we can write the case for the multiplication. I'm going to copy and paste it again. This time I'm going to change the symbol to multiplication symbol and we will perform number one multiplied by number two. Now, similarly, we have to write the case for the division operation. But while performing division, one thing that we have to remember is uh, we have to avoid the situation of divide by zero we should make sure that the denominator is not zero. So we will write the case now. So it will be case and the case value will be the division operation. So here, uh, if you look at the code that we have written till now, for addition, we are performing number one plus number two. For subtraction, we are writing number one minus number two. For multiplication, we are performing number one multiplied by number two. If we continue with this flow, then for the division operation, we will write number one divided by number two. So here we have to check whether number two variable is containing zero or not. If it is containing zero, then we will display a message stating that divide by zero situation. Otherwise, we will perform the division operation and we will display the result. So here we will check the uh, number two variables value by using the if else conditional statement. If number two variable is containing a value which is equal to zero. If it is so, then what we want to do? We want to display a message stating that divide by zero situation. So I'm going to use the pumped print line method and uh, I'm going to say divide by zero situation. If the number two variable is not containing zero, then what we want to do is we want to perform the division operation and uh, we want to display the result. So here uh, I'm going to copy this uh, statement and I'm going to paste it. And what we do is we will perform number one divided by number two. OK, so now here we have written the um, uh, cases for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. If you want, you can add more functionality. For example, you can add the functionality for finding the reminder value by using the modulus operator. But I'm going to stop here. And one more thing that I'm going to add here is if the user is going to enter 
um, any other character, any other operator, for example, let us say the user is going to enter dollar symbol. For that, I want to display a message stating that invalid operator. So for that, I'm going to add the default case in here. And in this default case, I'm going to say invalid operator. So it will be formed dot print line and I'm going to say invalid operator. Now, if I look at this code, then I have made a mistake. That is, uh, I have mentioned print line in lowercase. Actually, it is capital P print line. Similarly here also, I'm going to change that. And after that, I'm going to save this program and uh, I'm going to run this. Enter the first number. I'm going to say 30.25. Enter the second number, I'm going to say 56.89. Enter the operator, I'm going to say plus. It says 30.25 plus 56.89 is equal to 87.140000. Now, if you look at this output, then the values are displayed with six decimal places. If you want, you can control that. Uh, if you want to display the values with, let us say, two decimal places, then you guys can do that just by writing percentage dot 2f if you want to display the values with three decimal places then you have to write in the format specifier as percentage dot 3f okay i'm going to make that modification now here i will display the values with three decimal places so i'm going to display percentage dot 3f okay after that i'm going to save the program and uh, i'm going to run it enter the first number i'm going to say 10 Enter the second number, I'm going to say 60. Enter the operator, this time I'm going to say subtraction. It says minus 50. But if you look at this uh, output, then the values are displayed with three decimal places. Okay. Now I'm going to run it one more time. I'm going to say 50, 60, multiplication. It will display the value. Let's run it one more time. I'm going to say 50, 80 and uh, enter the operator. I'm going to say division. It will display the result as 0.625. Let's run it one more time. I'm going to say 50 and the second number as 0 and the operator is division. Now it says divide by 0 situation. Let's run it one more time. And this time I'm going to say 40, 60 and for the operator, I'm going to enter, let us say dollar symbol. And now it says invalid operator. So the calculator program is working and the code for this tutorial will be available in my website. Now, if you want, you can add more functionality. Actually, I want you to add uh, one more functionality here. That is, I want you to add the functionality for getting the reminder value by using the modulus operator. After adding that functionality to this code, I want you to post your code in the comment section. I'll take a look at it and uh, if you make any mistakes, then I'll let you know. So this is it guys for this video. Thank you for watching. This is how we can write a simple Go program to mimic the working of a very simple calculator. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button. If you want to say something, then write that in the comment box. For more tutorials like this, do subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later in the next video.